please welcome Cecile Richards. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Good to be here. Uh, you have a lot of fans in the audience. <laughs> a lot of, uh... Thanks. Uh, and I feel like I feel like you need fans in the. <laughs> we'll take these... everyone we can get. Yeah, yeah. In, in these talk, uh, dark times. Let's get straight into it. I mean, it feels like you cannot turn on the news these days, uh, especially after the Trump uh, victory, mm -hmm. without seeing another story up about how Paul Ryan and the Republicans are planning to defund Planned Parenthood. In fact, I hear that phrase. So much, it sounds like defund Planned Parenthood is the new name of the organization. It's like, not welcome a bit. to defund Planned Parenthood. That's, yeah, no. that's what. It, are you tired? No, 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 not a bit. In fact, I'm energized. I, it has been an outpouring of support for Planned Parenthood ever since Paul Ryan said that. In fact, I think you can't even get a phone call into Speaker Ryan's office anymore uh, because of so many folks calling concerned. Um, and we saw actually after the election at Planned Parenthood a flood of women calling. We had a 900% increase. In women in the first couple of days trying to get appointments to get an IUD wow. because they were worried about losing their access to health care. You, you, you see this on the ground, and Planned Parenthood is providing vital services. Um, but at the same time, it has become a contentious issue in America. How do you, how do you balance that world between going, we're a health care provider, whilst at the same time some people going, yeah, but you're doing what we don't want you to do for some people? Actually, Planned Parenthood is more popular than the entire United States Congress. Uh, and <laughs> so, so and, and I will say, I think if there were more members of Congress who could get pregnant, we wouldn't be arguing about birth control. Uh, and so, I mean, the truth, Trevor, is that one in five women in this country have been to Planned Parenthood for health care. Uh, we see about two and a half million patients a year. And what we've been hearing ever since uh, um, Speaker Ryan said that is women and men coming out in droves, yeah. uh, wanting to support the organization, talk about the care that they got at Planned Parenthood. Uh, we're going to have thousands of folks, I think, come to Washington. In fact, there are so many people that wanted to come and wear a pink Planned Parenthood hat. Literally, the factory ran out of pink yarn that makes the, pl the pink Planned Parenthood hats. Wow. Uh, so uh, we're seeing really record record amount of support in the country. I, I guess you need that support because uh, now we're in a position where we're witnessing the Republicans with the majority they need mm -hmm. to defund Planned Parenthood. Um, what, what's, what's interesting about the conversations in and around this is that Planned Parenthood provides so many more services mm -hmm. than just abortions. Is this something that doesn't get through, or is, is there a way to create a better separation, or, or, or is it a conversation that cannot really be uh, negotiated? Well, we're really proud of Planned Parenthood to provide women all of their reproductive health care, and we always will. Uh, I think that's what's really important to understand is under the, the la for, during the last eight years with President Obama, yeah. who was a huge supporter of women's health uh, and health care access, and we actually got birth control covered for 55 million women in this country at no copay, including probably some folks here. <laughs> Actually, you know, it's interesting. We're at a 30-year low for unintended pregnancy in America. We're at a historic low for teenage pregnancy in America. And that's largely because women have better access uh, to family planning. I would say the American people think that Planned Parenthood is actually the solution, not the problem. Uh, and so what we're... Um, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> but so I, I really do think that it is a matter of folks in Washington understanding that women's need for health care, it's not a partisan issue. And that's what I think women are so perplexed about, is why are people playing politics with women's health care in America? And uh, the women who come to Planned Parenthood, they're Republicans, they're Democrats, they're independents, because they're not coming to make a political statement. They're coming because they need high-quality, affordable health care, and that's what we provide. Let, let, me, let me play devil's advocate for a little bit, then. Um, you know, some of the arguments you hear people making are, why should the government have to pay uh, for a service that many people in America don't agree with? Or why should there be any funding from government that goes to uh, an organization that provides anything that they, they don't agree with? 
It's a good answer. Yeah, of course. Yeah, terrific. So uh, first, it's really important to understand that Planned Parenthood is not a line item in the federal budget, right? We just get reimbursed like every other health care provider for providing uh, family planning services, cancer screenings, well woman visits, STI testing and treatment. And in fact, federal funding, as you probably know, yes. um, does not pay for abortion services. I think that's wrong. That's a law that's been in effect for a long, long time. But so when Paul Ryan says we're going to defund Planned Parenthood, what it means is actually that millions of folks who come to us for preventive care can no longer come to us, including thousands of women actually in his home state of Wisconsin. I actually think that if you're concerned about uh, preventing unintended pregnancy and the need for abortion in this country, uh, you should triple the funding for Planned Parenthood because that's the work, the, the that's the work we do. That's, well, that's the work we do. And look, I'll, I'll give you another example. I mean, I come from the state of Texas where the politicians have really run roughshod over women's health care access and they, they shut down dozens of women's health care centers. We saw unintended pregnancy rates go up. Um, and we also saw a doubling of the maternal mortality rate in Texas, and particularly among low-income women and women of color who had the least access to health care. Those are a lot of the women that we see at Planned Parenthood. And so this is an issue of access to health care, of a, you know, a, a wide swath of health care. And for many folks, we're their only health care provider. And Paul Ryan is now saying we're going to end that. When, when, when the Republicans say it's not about denying women health care. It's about uh, getting the money to places where we feel it would be better uh, suited. So they say it'll go to community health care centers. Mm -hmm. You know, that still means that there are many women who won't have access to any form of health care at all. Absolutely. In fact, the community health centers have said, we can't see all these patients that Planned Parenthood sees. The Congressional Budget Office has said, this is gonna cost the taxpayers $130 million at a minimum if you end women's ability to go to Planned Parenthood. Is that is that just in the defunding mm -hmm. of Planned Because yeah. it'll actually cost money to, to put it all together. to try to replace it. Yes. And then the other thing, which I think is an important uh, part of all this, is it's not only that Congress is saying they're going to end women's ability to go to Planned Parenthood, and not just women. We have a lot of men that come to us and, and young people. Last night, in the dead of night, when we're all asleep... At 1.30 uh, a.m. Exactly. Yep. The United States Senate starts ramming through a repeal of the Affordable Care Act, which means 20 million people lose their health care coverage. It means young people uh, that are 26 and, and, and younger can no longer stay on their um, parents' health insurance plan. It means people with pre-existing conditions uh, can't get uh, health insurance anymore. And... Kirsten Gillibrand, the great senator from the state of New York. Uh, where, yeah, she's fabulous. I mean, she, she had the Senate vote last night on protecting women's health care access, uh, and the Republican leadership defeated that as well. So I think it's important to understand it's not only that they want to end access to Planned Parenthood, they want to end access to care for a lot of folks in this country. Uh, and I believe it's going to cause a health care crisis. We saw that it did in Texas. We've seen yeah. this happen in other states. And so I hope that every person who is watching this, if you've been a Planned Parenthood patient or if you care about access to health care, you need to call your member of Congress, call your senator, and, and call the Trump administration. I uh, appreciate your time. I thank you for being here. And so do many people in the audience. Thank you so much hey, for coming. thanks for having me. Hey there, thanks for watching. If you like that video, click below to subscribe or click here to delete the internet. Yes, you found the button. Please be careful. Delete the entire internet right here.